Hallelujah. Virtuous, what does the word mean? When I, when I hear words like this, because you know this ties back, and we're going to go there to, a, to a, a scripture. Everybody, when we talk about virtuous woman that knows the Bible, thinks about Psalms 31. Amen. Sorry, Proverbs. Sorry. Too many things on my mind. Thank you. See, y'all do know. Hallelujah. Proverbs 31. We're going to get there in a minute. But the word virtuous, what does it actually mean to be virtuous? Virtuous, by definition, means having high moral standards or noble character. Still a little bit generic to me in terms of what that looks like. But that is the concept, someone who has high moral standards. is morality. It gets a little bit nebulous today because morality today has become nebulous. What does it mean to be moral? I, some people think they, they you know, y'all know, y'all know, okay. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But virtuous means to be non-compromising. Self-value or standards. Not easy. Amen? Think enough about yourself to be non-compromising in your standards and non-compromising in your self-value, your self-worth. Virtuous. You got to think something. You got to understand that you have some value and you're willing and ready to protect that value, that character, that morality about yourself. It means portraying of character of a woman. Do honor and respect. Amen. Amen? That means no matter what. It may be good days, it may be bad days, but I'm still valuable. I still have character. I'm still caring and maintaining my character in the midst of the good stuff that happens and the bad stuff that happens. To be virtuous means to exemplify value, enhancing and elevating those around her. I like that. Because not only does it mean that you have value, but your value enhances the value of those that come in contact with you. Now, that's a virtuous woman. Amen? Amen. Blessed and highly favored. Come on, somebody. Yes. Seen and unseen. Sometimes it may be evident. Sometimes it may not. But how many of you know you are still blessed? Yes. And, come on, virtuous woman. And highly favored. Amen? Interesting thing for you, virtuous is actually, virtuous woman is a God idea. God is the one that created the idea, the concept of a virtuous woman. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it talks about Adam being by himself, and he says, it is not good that a man, the man should be alone. As a result of that, or in, in, in adjusting that, correcting that, he says, I will make a helpmeet or a helper for him. Everybody say helper. helper. And so God created the woman to be in support or in help or help build up the creation of man. Interesting thing about it is that God intends, I believe, for the woman to complete a man. Not necessarily suggesting that a man is incomplete without a woman or a woman is incomplete without a man. But I suggest you think about it this way. Think about it two way or a two, second two-way dimension versus a three-way. We're, we're complete as we are. We are, we are two-way, two -way. we're XY, we are two-dimensional. Amen, we have control of our life and our situation, but when we come together, it adds a third dimension, another level that was not there before, an opportunity to expand, to broaden ourselves. Each of us, men and women, are complete in and ourselves, but there oftentimes are limitations in that completeness. Men have a tendency oftentimes of, you know, they, they, we can be very extremists. We either work too hard or we don't work at all. Amen? We're either laser focused or we have no focus whatsoever. Right? We, we, we have this tendency of being unbalanced, even in our completeness. We can see things only to a certain level. We have a certain perception. We have a certain level of expectation of how things should work and how things should go. I believe that God provided woman to be a counterbalance to a man. That's why so many opposites attract. Y'all notice that? <laughs> Amen. From different sides of the world. One quiet, one loud. One is shy, one is extroverted out there. Amen. One likes the country, one likes the city. Amen. Amen. You ever watch house hunters? You see, they bring these people together, and they get in the house, and they want the exact opposite house. 
How did these two people ever get together? One wants a big house, one wants a small one. One wants a contemporary house, one wants a traditional one. Why are y'all even shopping together? You're looking for two entirely different things. But in doing so, they broaden each other out. They become a new completion, holistic having come together. A third dimension is added to who and what they are. Bible shows us that God positioned the woman to help the man to be whole. And in doing so, she added dimension not only to him, but dimension to herself as well. Amen? Now, I want to go to this and take this for a minute on this to help us understand that not all women are virtuous women. Hey, hey, hmm, hmm. Got to break it down. Amen? Let's be real about it. Not all women are virtuous women. Let me talk to you very quickly about four different types of women. Number one, there's a bad woman with bad intentions. Yes, they do exist. Amen? Bad women with bad intentions. And there's lots of examples in the Bibles to these. A bad woman with bad intentions, amen, is destructive, corrupting, abusive, users, cold and calculated, and some are just straight up evil. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about examples like Delilah to Samson was with him but didn't really care about him was with him to get what she could get out of him and when it turned against her she turned against him that's a bad woman with some bad intentions Jezebel was the bad woman to Ahab if Ahab didn't have his own problems Jezebel took him and escalated she added a third dimension all right but it was in the wrong direction it made things even worse. So this is to the guys. Guys, you got to understand that they're out there. Amen. There are some bad women with straight up bad intentions. And they may be hanging around you and smiling at you, but they are not to your best interest. Ladies, can I get an amen? amen. I'm not talking about y'all, of course. Amen. Number two. Now, I want to talk about the good ones because there's some situations there. First of all, there's a good woman in a bad situation. The good woman, just in a bad situation. The environment that they've been in or they've been brought up in. The, sometimes some of them have been put in emotional bondage and emotional situations. And oftentimes they are struggling with the reality that what I'm doing does not truly represent who I am. The Bible shows us some women like this. Rahab, amen, in the city of Jericho was a harlot. Amen. Trapped in a situation with a group of people where there was nothing else for her or nothing she could do. Somehow she got in this situation, amen, which was a bad situation, but she was actually a good woman. And when the people of God showed up, she was there, amen, to help support them do the right thing in the midst of the wrong atmosphere that she knew she was living and tied into. As a result of that, God not only blessed her and brought her out of that situation, but how many of you realize she became the great, 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 et cetera, grandmother, not only of King David, but of Christ himself. Amen. Amen. She was a good woman, just in a bad situation. Mary Magdalene in the New Testament, amen, who was with Jesus, was a, a good woman in a bad situation. Jesus found her. She had been torn up inside emotionally. She had been abused, taken advantage of. She had gotten into selling her body, amen, to survive. And Jesus came along and found her and showed her grace and showed her the right way. She was a good woman in a bad situation. And when the right situation came in, came on, she was able to show what she truly was inside. Number three is a good woman and makes bad decisions. Hmm. There are some good women that the decision making is not always what it should be. Sometimes even in terms of the relationships as we described, they'll find themselves stepping out of place, getting themselves in a wrong situation because of decisions they made, potentially drawing other people into their bad decisions with them. One of the most powerful stories of this is the story of Eve. Adam and Eve. Now, we don't talk about Eve too much. Amen. It's kind of like it politically incorrect. Amen. To say negative things about Eve. But the reality is she was a good woman that made a bad decision. In doing so, she stepped out of her. First of all, she had a position of influence with Adam, which is what she was created to do. 
but she stepped out of her position and she caused a situation and caused him and the rest of us to go along that way. Why? Because she decided that what was being offered to them and to her was in their best interest. The problem is she had a, a position of influence, but she stepped out of the will of God in the things that she was making choices about. If you're going to be in a position of influence, you have to make sure that the decisions you're making are not because of how you feel, because of how you want. If you're going to be influencing someone, you better make sure you align with the purposes of God. Not only Eve, but so many. Sarah, amen, the wife of Abraham, Abram, amen. He laughed. She laughed. Instead of believing when God told her, amen, sent the message to her that she was going to have a child, her faith, amen, dwindled. Not that she was the only one that ever did that, but not the right decision. Amen. Job's wife told him, you ought to just curse God and die. Why? Because she was concerned about him, but she was making a statement outside of the will and purpose of God in their lives. Bad decision. Lot's wife, amen, was such a resistance to what God was trying to do that, Lot, that God had to turn into a pillar of salt and put, leave her behind. Because you are outside of the will and you can't be used in what God is getting ready to do. David's wife, amen, he was dancing before the Lord and his first wife, Michael, I believe her name was, amen, was looking at him saying, you're supposed to be a king. How you supposed to be this, amen, what are you doing acting like this? She was outside of God, amen, looking at him, trying to enhance him, but doing so not realizing what he was doing was in alignment with what God was saying. You can be a good woman. Make some bad decisions. So if you're going to be in a position of influence, make sure you are aligned with the will of God in the things that you're influencing. The fourth one is a good woman that makes good decisions. Amen. Amen. This is a virtuous woman. Dedicated. Faithful. Enhancing to any goal. One of the best examples the Bible gives us of this is Mary, Mary the mother of Jesus. Mary was a woman who was faithful, faithful to her husband, faithful to her family, faithful to Christ. She enhanced him, amen, Christ, in what she did around him. She never stopped believing. When he was on the cross, she never stopped believing, amen. Her faith and trust in what God had instilled in him through her and, and directly, amen, never wavered. She was the one that inspired him to do his first public ministry, first public miracle. Amen. She was an influencer to the will and the purposes of God. She was a virtuous woman. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say that's the, one. that's the one. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs 31. I want to move quickly. And I want to read you a few verses here. Amen. Again, we know this. See, I said Proverbs that time. Hallelujah. Proverbs 31. Verse 10, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I want you to get the understanding of what's here because there are very several specific things that are identified when it talks about the virtuous woman. Proverbs 31, beginning at verse 10. I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation, just the first couple of verses. It says, who can find a virtuous, virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies, one of my wife's favorite. Favorite verses there. He likes to remind me how precious he is. Hallelujah. <laughs> Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? Now, I want you to understand that in order to be a virtuous wife, you have to first be a virtuous woman. Now I'm talking to the ladies again. Amen. Because if you want, if a man is looking for a virtuous wife, he's got to find a virtuous woman first. You can't wait until you become married to become virtuous. It's the characters that he sees in you, amen, that are portrayed through you that will draw him. So if you're going to be a virtuous wife, don't wait for that. You got to be a virtuous woman first. Amen. You got to build the character now. Not only do you want to build the character in you, but build it in your children. Amen. You want your children to come up with the right minds. You've got to give them the right example of what it is that they're supposed to be. You can't expect them to be virtuous if you're not. True. Amen. We got to be a good example. Verse 11 says her husband can trust her. He's trustworthy. And she will greatly enrich his life. That's that third dimension. Amen. She's not a draw. She's not a carry. She's actually enhancing and enriching to the life. Amen. Where would we be men, be men without our virtuous woman? 
Hello, y'all better get with me. Hello. Come on, guys. Don't be slow today. Amen. Verse 12, she brings him good, not harm. Come on, guys. Oh, y'all too quiet. I'm about to take you out of a football game or something. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. You got to learn how to work with cues here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to I'm going to skip 13 through 24, but I want to interpret it into modern day because these first few verses we just read talk about the character of the woman. These 13 through 24 talks about the behaviors and those behaviors. I want to just bring them up to modernize them to you. And the behaviors it describes, number one, she's entrepreneurial. She is innovative. She's constructive. She's hardworking. She's thoughtful. Amen. And I think it's worth mentioning verse 23 specifically. Amen. Verse 23 says her husband is well known in the city gates where he sits with the other civic leaders. In other words, because of his wife, he is well known. Amen. Amen. First of all, she's beautiful. So every man knows a woman, a man has got a beautiful wife. Amen. Not only that, but he enhances her. He, she enhances him. So that he becomes, amen, more appreciated, more respected. People pay different attention to him. He dresses a little bit different, amen. He, she learns how to sit up a little bit straight, amen, how to speak a little bit better. Because she is enhancing to everything that's around her. She inspires him. She helps elevate his expectations of himself. Come on, virtuous woman. Y'all better tell them something. Hallelujah. We jump down to verse 26. Verse 26, it says, she is clothed with strength and dignity. And she laughs without fear of the future. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Listen, verse 26, when she speaks, her words are wise. And she gives instructions with kindness. You got to learn how to have wisdom mixed with kindness. Some of the most greatest mothers that I've seen, mothers in the church, senior mothers I've seen, knew how to just get you straight and smile the whole time. <laughs> they would be loving on you while they tell you, you better get up from there, pull them britches up, get them shoes clean, set yourself straight, get your act together. Brother, where's your job? What you doing, brother? Hey, Amen. How you treating that woman? How you, everything all right over there? Hey, Amen. Some of y'all thought they was nosy. Hallelujah. <laughs> But they were giving instruction, not only to the men, but to the women. Watching them go through things and dealing with things. They learn how to help them sometimes just get themselves straight, but just do it mixed with, with kindness. Know how to, how to do it right, gracefully. Virtuous woman. Verse 27, she carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. 28, her children stand, listen, this part of it, okay, we talked about character again. This part of it talks about praise for this woman. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. Amen. I just saw some messages coming through from my, my, my daughters. Amen. Praising their mother, praising their grandmother. Amen. Both of them have gone on to be with the Lord, but they're still fine. I remember, thank God for my mother, for my grandmother. Their children will praise them. Her husband praises her. Her. Verse 29, <laughs> there are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> Every man in here ought to think, I got the best one. Come on, man, amen. How many of y'all believe y'all got the best one? I'm glad y'all feel that way, but I got the best one. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 30 says, charm is deceptive and beauty does not last. But a woman who fears the Lord will greatly be praised. Reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds be publicly declared, declare her praise. That's what we're here to do today, is to celebrate, amen, our virtuous woman. Let me show you one more scripture in the book of Acts, chapter 9. Speaking of being rewarded and your, your, letting your deeds speak for you. Acts chapter 9, verse 36, tells us a story about a woman named Tabitha or Dorcas. Reading in the New Living again, it says, There was a believer in Joppa named Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. 
She was always doing kind things for others and helping the poor. We're in Acts chapter 9, verse 37. Oops, I skipped the page. Verse 37. It says, about this time, she became ill and died. Her body was washed for burial and laid in an upstairs room. But the believers had heard that Peter was nearby at Lydia, so they sent two men to beg him, please come as soon as possible. Listen to verse 39. So Peter returned to them, and as soon as he arrived, they took him to the upstairs room. The room was filled, listen, with widows who were weeping and showing him the coats and the other clothes Dorcas made for them. As this woman was here and had died, there was a testimony that lived on beyond her. Because those that were there, amen, they were weeping. They were sorrowful to see her go. And they pointed to all the good things that she had done. When they wanted to explain to Peter why this person was so valuable and why she meant so much to them, they pointed to the things that she had done how selfless she was, how she had given and done so much for those around her, how she had enhanced everyone around her. This is the signs of a virtuous woman because people's lives are changed from having been connected to them. If you want to be a virtuous woman, learn how to change not only your own life. You can't be virtuous just taking care of yourself. You have to be able to extend out to somebody else, to have some essence. There has to be something around you that somebody wants to be like. And it's all right for somebody to see you and want to have something that you got. That's all right. Because that means that you have something, amen, to show and reveal that somebody else wants to, uh, uh, wants to aspire to. Virtuous women, let them see you. Let them see it in the way that you walk. Let them see it in the way that you smile. Let them see it in the way that you look. Did y'all know it's okay to look good? Amen. Amen. Some people will have you think, you know, you need to hide and dress down and cover up and baggy up. It's all right to be beautiful. Amen. And it, it can be beautiful on the outside. It can be beautiful on the inside. It is all right. Just let your essence shine. Don't let anybody put out your light. Amen. Look as good as you can look. And you don't have to feel sorry about it. Amen? amen? Come on, ladies. Somebody say amen for me. Amen. Let them see what you do. Let them see who you are. And yes, they will notice it. Today we notice. Amen. And we celebrate. Amen. The virtuous woman of destiny preparation. Somebody give God a praise right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, man. Why don't y'all stand up and give some praise for the women? Come on, man. Come on. Let's give them some praise today. Let's be thankful. Our virtuous women, our virtuous mothers. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We got to get y'all a little more energy still, but that's all right. Sit down. Amen.